and then the next step we could see all these department stores that are all before everybody's time here, Arlen's and Clark's and Miracle Mart and, and Atlantic Mills and so forth. And they were doing a lot of business. And we said, if they put those together with a grocery store, it'll be quite a store. Somebody's going to do it, we better do it. So that's how we started Thrifty Acres. We have as smart a people as anybody else. We have as dedicated people as anybody else. And so we can go off in the future like we did in the past and say, hey, we're going to do it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be make us sweat once in a while, but we'll figure out a way. If we can become better citizens in the work we do of our great country and, and the world, and I realize that's making a broad brush, but it makes us more, more comfortable with what we are if we're contributing. I know the impact that we'd like to have, and that is that, uh, that the community is better off because we came than as if we didn't. It's, it's been my life. I've never had any other job, and I think I could enjoy doing many other things, but uh, it, it becomes a part of you, and uh, I guess uh, it's like a mother and a child, and I was there the day the store was born. Yes, I was only 14 years old, but uh, it's, it becomes a big part of your life. From the time I was seven till 14, I mean, uh, I fed them hay and shoveled the manure and hauled the manure and spread it on the field and, and so forth. So, and those coveralls I have on in the picture, I don't know what it looks like in the sculpture. I would dare say we came home from school and we took all our school clothes off. And that's the only thing I got on. But that's all I needed, just a set of coveralls. It covered everything. And, uh, and my mother didn't care how dirty we got as long as we had the old clothes on. And we climbed pine trees that got full of pitch and, and we'd get into all kinds of mischief. But uh, I had an odd experience with cows just because of that seven to four, that seven year period in my life and horses. I, uh, we probably had 30 different horses because we were trying to make it get a better one every time and every time the dealer or the farmer was smarter than we were. We went backwards, we got a bad deal. I've always shared my responsibility and what I took to do it with other people. In other words, I had people around me I could trust and I valued and, and uh, or whatever it is, and I just ask a lot of people. And then after I got the reactions, I'd make up my mind uh, uh, how I wanted to go. And so I've never been lonesome, and, and the people you ask are usually pleased to be asked, and I've said many times uh, to Harvey Lemon and Earl Holton and these fellas, I said, I want your advice, but I don't promise to take it. Because I, I didn't want to not, I didn't want to yield to their, to their wishes if I didn't think it was right. And I didn't have to do, worry about it, but uh, that's what I said a lot of times. So I've never been lonesome. If you don't have a destination, if you're going to Lansing, you don't tell the car how to get to Lansing, you never get to Lansing. Well, the same thing is in life. If you don't have a goal, uh, then you're just wandering aimlessly through. So you have to set certain targets in life. And uh, if you do that, why well, you get where you want to go because you aren't getting where you want to go uh, if you don't know where you're going. <laughs> The guy says, my wife doesn't want these Sunnyfield Rice Krispies. They had Kellogg's, that was the brand, and Sunnyfield was a private brand. The Sunnyfield probably sold for a dime, and the Kellogg probably two for a quarter. So he bought the dime one, but she didn't want that. She told her husband I got it at the Myers, and I'd like, get your money back. So I started to say to the customer, well, we didn't sell it to you. It says right there, Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company. My dad says, shut up, Fred, give them the money, we can eat it. And, which we did. I mean, uh, it was cheaper than we could buy Kellogg's wholesale. We didn't have a private brand. And, but don't send them, the message is, don't send them to a competitor for 10 cents. 
So I got that message loudly and clearly. Yeah. And he was a very poor guy. I mean, my dad worked in the cotton mills. He started at 12 years old at a penny an hour in American money, three cents of Dutch money. His mother started when she was six years old. The, the prayer hanging in our bedroom, and I bet you know it, is help me to, to accept what I can't change, to change what I should and can, and have the wisdom to know the difference. And I would hope that when I die, and we all die, that somebody can say, Fred lived, Fred died, the world's a little better because he came along. If that happens, then I'll have done my job.